We acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and recognise their continuing connection to land, waters and culture. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. This is Cheryl from Jajawarong Country. Hello, Eric, and welcome everyone to the Beyond 90 podcast episode 78. I feel like if I could sing anywhere near decent, I'd sing something like just the two of us. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you you have a good voice for singing, Eric? No, absolutely not. (laughs) But anyway, thanks for... uh, Thanks for having me on, Cheryl. Um, plenty to discuss. It's been quite the week in football, both has here and a, overseas. It has been a big week. I feel like I've missed some of it, so I hope Eric's across the rest of it. But And I do wonder whether or not maybe we'll get Stefan join later and potentially Soon. Dale as Soon, well. Soon, apparently. So it won't just be the two of us. We'll make it a bit, bit of a party later on. But let's start, as we always do, by talking about our a little bit of history as we align with our cap numbers and episode numbers. So episode number 78, cap number 78, the history behind that is Lizzie Clayton, who was Matilda's cap number 78, hailing from Perth. So we do have a spreadsheet out there somewhere which talks about where all the different Matildas have come from. But Lizzie made 26 appearances for Australia, including six 16 A internationals, and she netted six goals for the Matildas. She played in the 1995 World Cup in Sweden before hanging up her boots the following year after a bit of an accident by the sound of it with a couple of stitches involved on the football field, not a car accident or anything like that. In the pod notes, in the show notes, we'll put a link in there for you to read a little bit more about her place in Matilda's history. So that is Cap number 78, Lizzie Clayton. Thanks very much, Lizzie, for your contribution to the Matildas. On to hot topics. Uh, There's some news out there that the uh, final three or or the finalists for FIFA's The Best Awards have been announced and Sam Kerr is amongst them. So Sam Kerr is one of the three. The other two listed in there, both are from Spain and both play for Barcelona, I I think. So that's Jenny Hermoso and Alexia Pateas. So congratulations to all of those with the award actually being announced on the 17th of January, so not too long away. might be for us the 18th of January. Um, Eric, I'm not sure if you're aware of the timings or Uh, overnight-ish. Well, there's being aware of the timings and then there's figuring out the time zone implications. So I've only, I'm not across it, unfortunately, but obviously best of luck to Sam, although I'll be honest, wouldn't be upset if she didn't win it, given who the other two players are. Who would you be your pick of the other two players? Because, I mean, I, in uh, some of the, the awards gone past, they've gone to players who, you know, have a name in football but haven't necessarily mm-hmm. had the best mm-hmm. seasons in football. Mm-hmm. But this time around, it really seems like of the two Spaniards in there, I think they're both terrific picks. Oh, I, I mean, yes, I'm not quite sure how this 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 is calculated, but... If you go back to the Champions League final with Emerson and Puteas on the winning side and Sam Kerr most definitely not on the winning side, and just people that know a lot more than me say, basically, um, Spain actually have a very competitive league. Barcelona just make everyone else look terrible. So yep. feel like it's going to be one of the Spaniards. All right. And G'day, Stefan, and welcome, and thank you for joining us as well. You've joined at the moment when we're talking about who do you think will pick up FIFA's the best award for the best women's player of the year? Yeah, hi, Cheryl. Hi, Eric. Good, uh, good to good to be back. Uh, I agree with Eric there. I think um, it'd be lovely if Sam Sam got up and won won that award, but uh, you know it's hard to go, go past um, particular Patelis, I think. Uh, is that how you pronounce the name? Sorry, Patias. Uh, yeah, Patias, yeah. Yes. Sorry, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, fingers crossed for Sam. Yeah. All right. Well, and Sam's in good company, but it probably it's getting to the point where it's becoming more and more difficult to win these awards because of the talent that's coming through in those um, in all the players around the world. So it's great to see it. And we do wish Sam all of the best. We'll see what happens. In other big news in Australia, in particular. The squad for the Matildas has been announced. Eric, were you on those very nice and early morning calls or one early morning call? 7.45 is not early. So, yeah, I did, uh, was lucky enough to be part of 
the 7.45 a.m. pressure on Saturday with uh, the very erudite Tony Gustafsson. So we did get the squad. Uh, some of my thoughts, with, um, which I think have been covered elsewhere, if you've been following the media. As we all know, Katrina Gori made the final squad but decided to stay with start stay with Harper in Australia. I think there was some consultation of perhaps it not being the best thing for uh, a four-month-old or however old Harper is to go to the Asian Cup. Uh, Taylor Ray got at the very least into the camp, but unfortunately has caught COVID. So she's had to turn that down. Uh, but, uh, you know, obviously keep an eye on Taylor Ray. She'll, she'll be back. She's um, had an excellent season for Sydney FC. And basically, I think as part of that, you know, losing one defensive mid in Taylor Ray. Tony G had had conversations with Ivy Lewick and now Ivy Lewick back in the fold. And he's, Tony spoke about how impressive Ivy has been in Italy. So going on to that, I think basically a um, friend of Beyond 90, Samantha Lewis, asked the question I wanted to ask, which is basically tell us how good, tell us how good the young player, the, the, um, the younger the um train on players are for want of a better word. So Tony G. Tony spoke about Courtney Vine having the highest expected goals in the dove, the most 1v1 dribbles. Holly McNamara had the most assists in the competition and talked about her progressive runs, you know, her willingness to uh, take the ball forward, run, run with the ball, challenge the defense, and um praise Winnie Heatley for a lot of the same thing. Her willingness to attack space with the ball and to pass forward and uh, trouble opposition players. So, as we know, we all love ball playing centre back. So good to see Winona Heatley uh, getting that kind of recognition. He see uh, the other thing. They'll wait until the last day in Dubai before deciding on the final two squad spots. So, uh, for those of you not aware, twenty one players have confirmed. So you have Courtney Vine. Holly McNamara, Winona Heatley, and Carly Rusback and battling it out for the final two spots. Uh, because as per competition rules, you can make changes up to six hours before your first game, which is on the 21st against Indonesia. Uh, he actually tried to find a friendly game in Dubai, but instead they'll play an internal game. And they actually wanted to bring 30 players over to Dubai, but out of respect to the players and the A-League women's clubs, they didn't want to pull that may- many players out of the competition. So... Um, my particular observation is, uh, I think seven of seven out of the 21 confirmed players are under 25, as well as all four players selected that have been selected for the, as the extras for the camp. So yeah, it's like a young ish group of players. And, uh, I just want to know what, what were your thoughts on the squad? Either of you. Go for it, Stefan, take it away. Yeah, I really like the idea of the flexibility with the last four mm-hmm. spots down to two. It, it means that Tony can um, t- can look at the uh, the team in their internal warm up game, for example, and just uh, make it as, make a late call about whether he thinks they need to bolster, you know, the attack with two attacking options, or or whether he stylistically goes for one type of defender over the other. So I think that's um, that's a really smart move, and uh, I can't recall that we've done that sort of thing mm-hmm. before. Can either of you? Because uh, I think it's a great idea. Mm, I, that... I can't remember it. Yes, it's yeah. very smart. That yeah, rule's so... been around. That rule's a standard tournament rule. So, I mean, think. And I don't, I've not heard of any country doing it. So it's actually a, it's actually a pretty good idea. Tony might be onto something. Yeah, I think so too. I, so I, that was my first reaction. Um, I've seen some comments about the um, the the midfield. Um, how there's uh, like only four listed midfielders in the uh, in the squad. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I think uh, from some of the other lines that we've got, uh, we know that Ivy can play in midfield and we know that um, that Haley and um, Kaya can also do a job there. So perhaps not we're not quite as skinny there as it looks on first impression. Um, also very pleased that uh, Winnie and, and Carly are both in the mix for that defensive spot. I think they both deserve... Well, certainly Winnie, Winnie has uh, looked really good in the opening rounds of the uh, of the um, A-League women's and Carly looked terrific in her game um, for Cambria United on the weekend and um, played a really solid, energetic 88 minutes. So I'm um, very glad that she's still in the mix as well. Uh, slightly biased, I guess, but... Um, slightly. Yeah. That's yeah, slightly. interesting. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I had a chat with Carly um, after the game and she said that her foot has been... The surgery that she's had to her foot was really good. So uh, she's feeling really nice. So 
Um, so she's um, on the way up, I think, for a big year coming up. So I'm very glad that she's been, been selected, but also glad for Winnie that she's in the mix because I think uh, she's, she's impressed me as well. Uh, my thoughts, I, I think it's a great squad, but I thought that time and again, I think the question for me is, is this the squad that will actually win the Asian Cup? I was fortunate enough to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Tony just yesterday, actually, so on Sunday, and talk through using an analogy to say in an orchestra you need a, a whole bunch of different um, players effectively in the same way. So you might need a, a violinist and, I don't know, people who know music far better than I do would know all the different bits and pieces. I'm curious. I want to see how many instruments you can in an orchestra you can name now. Oh, uh, a violin, a cello. Yes. A, um, could be a – who knows? It could be some sort of saxophone and some Ooh, uh, I'm not sure percussion about saxophone. Yes, percussion there's lots of percussion. Instruments yes. and flutes, uh, you know, all sorts of different bits and pieces. But do you have all the elements that you need to be successful? And then Tony's response, and it's already out there on, there's a Beyond 90 podcast. It's only 14 minutes or so. So you can go off and listen to that one. It's already been uploaded. And one of the things that he said was, it's not just the players that you have, but it's also the players that you're able to rotate because in tournament mode, yes. it's, you know, game one is game one. Game two is a different proposition against a, a different um, opponent. And you might have a player that has a niggle, might need to be rested or the game management elements of it as well. So I think that was really good for me. Ivy Lewick being back is just a bonus. I'm a massive fan of Ivy Lewick and just love love her being out there and and I think from Tony's perspective it's not only the position and the game that she can play but it's also the person that she is amongst the team and I, I think that's important for them Eric was saying that the age of the team is you know a, a bunch of them around the 25 year old mark and that's terrific to be breaking in a number of younger players but I also think it's important to keep some of that um maybe it's the the mojo or something or other of the culture of the team as well. And I think Ivy's a really good one to have in there. We also talked about activating Sam Kerr and how that's been a conversation that he's had time and again. And he said throughout the Olympics, he feels like that that was something that they're able, able to do a little bit better. Um, and probably the final comment I would make, not necessarily about the squad, but leading into the Asian Cup is that the first match, just focusing on that first match, is against Indonesia. And how would Australia potentially have some challenges against them? And I think more broadly, some of the challenges that they will have is the way that they will sit back and probably compress some of the spaces and make sure that they'll be able to break those down through really smart ability on the ball and, and you know, keeping the ball tight. So it was a great conversation. I think it's a great squad. I'm, I'm really pleased to see there's a couple of players still in the mix. I did ask about players who could have been close to being picked as well. And, and he was polite and said that, you know, in fairness, it's um, there's a number of players who are good enough to be in the team, mm. but for, you know, a really difficult decision that he's had to make, there are players who just didn't make it. And it's not because they're not good enough. It's, you know, it's hard to make a cut. So anyway, that's, that's all I'll say about that. Um, it was, there was a really interesting article for me that I read from Anna Harrington, which was, I think in a uh, capital newspaper or something or other, I've got a link in the show notes as well about Ivy Lewick coming back into the Matilda's Asian cup squad. And the quote that I would use was it's from Tony Gustin, Gustafson. He said, it's about trying to get results in this tournament and winning the tournament. So as much as Ivy Lewick might be there for the moment, that doesn't necessarily mean that she would factor in for the World Cup in 2023, but he sees this tournament as one that we can win. Uh, just an extra thing, I suppose, about the list of match officials has been announced as well with a, a few Australians in there, which is great to see. So Casey Roper will be there, Lara Lee, Kate Jackowitz, and also Joanna Characitis. I'm really sorry. Is that something that anyone can pronounce better than me? But uh, yeah, Joanna para has. Yeah. 
Thank you. Yeah. She's been announced as an assistant referee. Yeah, so congratulations to the four of them off to travel to India if they're not already there. Uh, uh, yeah, it's just good. And yes, yeah, always good to recognize the third team. So yep, yes. Yep. Team ref, team ref. Uh, all right. Um, in other news as well, could the Matildas be heading to Algarve? I don't know how many people saw this little tweet that appeared. And again, I've got a link there. So Australia has been... Um, not necessarily announced, but I, I think there was a, a TV station in Denmark which called out Australia as potentially being there. They've already appeared in 1999, 2017 and 2018. It'd be great to see them there. Really strong competition as well in a couple of the other teams that they've announced. But uh, any further thoughts or confirmation on those guys? Uh, no, unless I believe Stefan showed me a teeth, but showed, showed me that tweet. But um, yeah, just, you know, it'd be... See, more games, the better if they can get them. That's like literally, that's how you develop these players for this level is just by exposing them to these top international teams. So I really hope we can make it stick. And the Algarve, it's a, it's a, it's a nice fun tournament. So if it, especially if it gets broadcasted, I would really enjoy um, Australia being in that. Yeah, and it traditionally runs around about February, February or March. I haven't actually seen the dates at the moment or specific dates and specific teams. So we'll see what happens with that. Now let's talk about the dub and let's give a big shout out to Stefan because the article of the week for me was Stefan's imports article. If you haven't already read it, I don't want to give you too much information about it, but you should definitely read it if you want to see the impacts that the imports have on the league itself and, the, and across years. And you can also see a bunch of information that Stefan has put together in there as well about where the imports come from and year on year it has changed drastically so Stefan great job with that and I think he's committed to using it as a project on a on a season by season basis so that'll be great to see thanks thanks Cheryl thanks for the nice words and thanks to to Eric for his patience in uh it's quite a big article in in editing that one and uh for his suggestions along the way so thanks yes yes Eric is behind every good article as well. Mm-hmm. So a yes. big shout out to Eric as well. Okay, so on to the results from the dub. Um, I'll call them out and then jump in and talk about them as much as you want. So the first one that we had was a round three match, which had been a little bit delayed between Perth and Canberra. It was a nil all draw. Uh, Stefan, do you want to throw in your thoughts on that one? Yeah, just trying to remember back to it. It was a game of two halves, wasn't it? I think that one. I think I think Neil may have put some thoughts together for us as well on that. But um, my recollection of it is a while ago now was that uh, Perth had the first half dominated and that Canberra dominated the second half and neither could put anything away. So it was a little, little frustrating in a way. Um, were you there for that one, Eric? No, I was not. And no? given that there was a COVID case alert, from uh, Wanderers Football Park, I'm glad I I'm glad I had work. To be honest, yeah. <laughs> yes, I was joking around with friends. If I'm going to get COVID, I want to see some goals first. So, <laughs> so yes, while while the point was welcome for Canberra, we, um, I think there's some regret uh, sensed that we didn't get more out of that game. I think with our performance in the second half, but you know, Perth had claims too in the first half, of course. So. So we have some audio from the post-match from Alex Aparkas, I think Ash Sykes, as well as Vicky Linton, and I've just done a little bit of editing on that. And it was interesting to see that Vicky Linton said that she was actually pretty pleased with the match that they had against Perth. So unless I've got my um, tongue tied and that's about the match against Adelaide, which was quite a different match. But, yeah, uh, great to see Ash Sykes score in that match against Canberra, which was later on in the week. But for round six results, the first match that was on paper was Newcastle versus Victory, which was postponed due to uh, some positive, a positive or multiple positive cases within the Newcastle squad, to the best of my knowledge. That one will be played sometime in the future. The impact of that is that Lynn Williams has finished up her tenure with Melbourne Victory, so she will um, not be available in any further and, and quite possibly with the impact that she has on a game in general. I think that could change things a little bit, but such is the, the dub. Uh, other matches that we had, so two matches on Saturday, Sydney against Perth, which was 4-0. And then the second match was Canberra against Adelaide, which was 1-3 in favour of Adelaide. Thoughts on both of those got games, Eric, maybe from Sydney? Sydney, Perth. Oh, so the main thought is 
put Courtney Vine in the Asian Cup squad. That's the main thought. Uh, just the way she was, it was just incredible. Played a part in three of Sydney's goals, um, involved in the build-up of Mackenzie Hawksby's opener. Mackenzie Hawksby, by the way, there's a player who's kind of unlucky, I think unlucky not to be in this latest Matilda squad. Uh, Courtney Vine showed a trademark speed to score the second and then set 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 up the third goal for Remy Simpson, who, by the way, congratulations to Remy on being part of the confirmed uh, squad for the Asian Cup after um, basically embarrassing a defender who I think, I, whose identity I need to protect. Because what Courtney Vine did, I think there was, it was one of those ones where I had my hands on my head in the press box. I couldn't believe what I'd just seen. And then also great to see Charlie Rule uh, get a on the score sheet. She uh, started at right back and then headed over header from Mackenzie Hawksby. So this team, it's kind of a team that's firing on all cylinders. But really for Perth, I just I did I almost tweeted on Beyond Nine's account and I thought better of it. Something like, has Jada Wyman brought a book? Is she lonely? Does she because it was yeah, she was didn't have much to do. And it was it was one of those ones where the keeper um kind of at, at an attacking set piece, they jog up to the center back just to have a chat, just so they still feel like they're part of the team. Because Sydney were just completely dominant. Uh, Alex Park, as I know, this, I'm well aware of the standards he sets, he will not be happy with uh, the way they defended for the goals, especially uh, basically Charlie Rule's goal, where she just had a free run and then headed the ball in from four yards out. But um, let's see what else was like. What were my other thoughts? Oh, some unfortunate news. Charlie Rule only started. Jess Nash was set to start, but uh, missed out because she had car trouble. I learned that from watching the mini match on Paramount Plus. So that's quite unfortunate. But for Perth, it's it's just kind of like the thing they had last season, although not as extreme, where they've come off a break, then they've had to play three games in a week, and it's just uh, it's just always hard for that to happen. Like there'll be better days for Perth Glory. It's a talented squad. They'll they'll have more wins uh, by the end of the season. Now, um, Perth people could are... actually be one team which would benefit from a conference style system if we had any more teams over that side of the world. Yes. But I don't want a conference-style season. Mm. But because of the complexity of them travelling and certainly in COVID times when, yeah, it's more of a hub for them. But anyway, keep going. Okay. Uh, oh, no, sorry. I've just been distracted by a, a random Twitter follower. Okay. Um, she'll disappear soon. And the um, <laughs> it's uh, – what else? It? Now, for those – People that are kind of worried about the form Sydney FC are in, they are, of course, going to um, lose at least Remy Seamson for some time. Pro high chance of losing Courtney Vine as well. And I would like to point out that while they still have Paige Satchel and uh, Cote Rojas, Sydney FC are yet to score a goal this season when either Paige Satchel or Cote Rojas is on the field. So there's hope yet for the rest of you. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. But yeah, just uh, I wanted to talk more about Perth. Unfortunately, Sydney's display just meant I, I just don't really remember anything, unfortunately. But as I said, they'll have better days. Um, so I think on to the other game, Stefan, you were at a uh, Viking part for and you definitely had um, lots of thoughts. Yeah, I had one or two. Um, my first thought was about the um, the timing of these games on both these days, so the both. On both days, the kickoff time was exactly the same for mm-hmm. for both sets of games. So that's I know in previous couple of seasons, I tried to space out the games more so that you could watch games live more. Um, mm-hmm. So this is not a great arrangement given well they're, they're being played in in the heat of the day a lot of these games. But also if you're going to a game, you have no chance to go home and watch a replay. If you're a, an ardent fan like me, you like to, mm-hmm. likes to watch uh, the game when you get home to get a different perspective on things. And ne- nor are you any chance of watching the other game that's on the same night because they aren't uploaded typically mm-hmm. the same the same evening. So uh, yeah, so there's some foibles there. So while we have a fantastic commentary team down at Canberra for the pre-games, 
Yes. Good mouse for a better, you know. Friends of Beyond 90, Teo Pelletier and Grayscale, you are that's correct. Right. And uh, Russ, Russ Gibbs also, uh, you know, yes. very exper yep. experienced and uh, did a great job on the sideline. So a fantastic team and, and really enjoy the pictures and the coverage. But we'd just like to be able to see them. And, uh, you know, if, if you've got a way today, sometimes that's um, not easy to squeeze everything in the weekend. So, yeah. um, so that's, that, that's, that's that side of it. The game itself... Um, yeah, funny you won. Um, it was a 1-3 loss to, to Canberra, 3-1 mm -hmm. loss. Uh, two goals to Perth in the first half, and they were to uh, Dylan Holmes with a nice volley after a bit of a goal mouth skirmish and a very nice little header at the end of it all down down to um, Dylan for a, for a volley into the corner. Uh, probably should have been defended a little, a little better. Um, that was fairly early in the game. And then um, I think for the second one, uh, Chelsea Dorber got on the end of a very nice long ball, through ball over the top, over the defence, and uh, managed to uh, tuck the ball away past, past Keely Richards. Um, it, I wondered about the offside on that one, but... Um, and I know oh, Charlie second one? Talking. Yes. No, she's onside. She was onside. She was onside? Very. Yeah, okay. that's, that's, uh, that's pretty clear. Well, that's fair, been, Stefan. You can wonder as yeah. I think as a real supporter, you should always wonder about things well, like I'm, that. I'm, oh, geez, I don't think she was on side. I'm backing Carly <laughs> on this too because Carly definitely went and asked the ref the question afterwards. So it wasn't <laughs> just me. Um, yeah, but the two two nil down um, made a change in the second half. Ash Sykes came on and made an, an immediate impact, uh, just as she had in the game against Perth. So she's um, providing a real spark to the team when she comes on. Uh, got a, a replying goal, uh, a loop, looping header as it turned out. And she said in the post-match interview that uh, she's got the best vertical leap in the team. Yep. So, which yeah, I, I can believe that. I can believe that. Yeah. So Speed um, and speed and um, vertical leap tend to go together. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't recall us um, scoring too many headed goals, but uh, that was a nice one. Um, and that's pretty good because Michelle Heyman, I think she's got a pretty decent leap as well. Yeah, but she starts, she, Michelle Heyman's starting from a much higher point than Ash Sykes, though, so <laughs> she doesn't need true. to jump as high. <laughs> yeah. Stefan, question um, for you as well. In, in terms of, like, the result was really weird on paper based on stats, which I love. So yeah. I think it was something like 14 shots from Canberra to four for Adelaide. Adelaide convert. 75% of their shots and Canberra don't. How close do you think the match was? And if you had to pick three top players from the game, would you pick them from Canberra? Would you pick them from Adelaide or a bit of both? Oh, you'd, you'd probably go a bit of both. I, I agree totally. It was a it was an odd game from that point of view. Um, the, the, it was three, three to one, the number of shots um, in Canberra's favour and Canberra had 58% pos pos uh, possession. So Vicky, after the game, was very happy with the way her team played, even though it was a 3-1 loss. Sometimes you don't uh, get that positive a response from a coach after that sort of loss. But she was very happy. But she did stress that it's what happens in either box that's so critical. So even though Adelaide had very few chances, they took theirs and, uh, and Canberra didn't take theirs. And we uh, obviously didn't defend as well either as, as we should have. And that, that third goal was a case in point. So really amazing substitution by Alex, um, sorry, by um, Adrian Stanton. Adrian Stanton. When, Whoa, yes, what a sub. <laughs> yeah, when he brought in Amir. And uh, on first touch, he uh, yeah. Yeah, took the ball um, from a throw in and uh, knocked a, a really nice ball across for Fiona Wirtz who uh, put the ball away. But neither of them were un under an awful lot of pressure, I didn't think, from the defence. So, um, so, yeah, so there's... There's lots of good good things happening in Canberra, but we're just not putting it together quite yet. Uh, really nice touches on the ball from Margot Rabin, from, from Ash Sykes, from uh, Chelsea Washington. She's starting to, uh, I think, um, grow grow into the season quite nicely. She's um, putting in some a good contribution in the middle of the park. Alira Toby, so lots of lots of nice good ball players, but um, we're still looking a little shaky on, with three at the back, getting exposed a bit. Um, so there'll be a, a really good question for Vicky Linton when Carly Rossbacken is no longer there, which is which is now. She's played her last game for the season. Does Vicky go with stay with a slightly higher risk? Well, it's not just slightly. I think it's probably a lot of the goals have been conceded with with three at the back. Um, a higher risk three at the back strategy, or does she bring in 
uh, Michaela Vidmar to to uh, try and go to a, a safer four at the back set. I say go um, risky because well, they, they need to. points, right? Yeah, to, we to do. get through yeah. to the to the finals, they they need points, and it's no point playing safe at this point in time. Yep, six rounds in, absolutely right. So, um, not an easy one. So it's been a funny build up the season so far for Canberra. It's taken us a long time to to get to where we are starting to look like we're going to do something. So yeah, yep. it's always the way with the dub. All right, on to the matches that we had on Sunday as well. So it was Brisbane in eighth position up against the Wanderers in seventh. I, I think even though Brisbane are below the Wanderers on the table, I always thought that they would bring the the money home or that's probably the updated tables, not pre-game. Um, strange match for me to see the Wanderers win. Maybe, I, I don't know, thoughts no, from... That was very strange. I think I think if Madge was on the pod, we would just have three minutes of her sighing because that's... Oh, Madge. Brisbane's, yeah, I... Uh, uh, to quote... Uh, something that Dale likes to say sometimes in, ter- in relation to Brisbane's attackers, it's the white rectangle, just put the little circle in it. Like, it just, they couldn't, there was no, it seemed like there's no confidence, no certainty when they're in front of the goal. And despite really, I think, I imagine they dominated most of the stats. You, when you don't finish, you leave yourself open to the kind of thing that happened in uh, the second half when the Wanderers, a good impact off the bench from Liv Price, uh, dances around a couple of tackles, wins the penalty, Western Sydney's own Briley Henry sticks it away, and that's that. I think one of my observations, I did love the dark arts from Catherine Canooley, uh, just um, as they're trying to hang on, just making a substitution in the 95th minute. I thought I thought that was wonderful and a very veteran move from a young coach. <laughs> Yeah, good call. And then the final match between Melbourne City and Wellington Phoenix could have been a, a massive blowout given the given the challenges that Phoenix have had so far with a very young squad, but 4-0, a little bit respectable, would you say? Um, who yeah. who had eyes on that match? I did. Um, so, yeah, like, it's... Uh... And it's Emma just Checker Wellington. scored, so that was pretty cool. Yes, they, they two of their central defenders score. Not not the best one, but the other and two. And Tori Tumath is in the, in the spotlight for dark arts as well, Eric. Have you been Why? on the phone to her, potentially having stepped on? <laughs> but, but that is <laughs> amazingly insulting to Tori Tumath to, to imply that anyone needs to teach her about dark arts. Now, back like, <laughs> don't, please don't do that ever again. Now, um, yeah, so as for Wellington, I think, look, they just have a, this highly talented group of players just haven't played a lot of football. So no Zeal, no New Zealand football championship this year, last, uh, the 2020, oh, sorry, no New Zealand football championship last year. The 2020 championship was just six games and a grand final. Everyone. Um, so they've been left to regional comps and whatever the future first domestic program involves, which is, I assume, finding boys youth teams to play. So they all, look, it's... It's a long-term thing. I would advise that basically good Phoenix fans and people in New Zealand be patient because I think we might have said this before. Uh, Sydney FC coach Ante Uric said this group of players will be semi will make the semi-finals in three years because they just need to get match practice so and basically get the experience so they can stop making uh, kind of these errors that lead to opposition goals. I think Gemma Lewis will be disappointed by conceding two goals from corners because they are both um, Winnie Heatley's goal and Emma Checker's goal of, of the messy variety, shall we say. Yep. Winnie Heatley scored from about two yards out with some undetermined part of her body, but uh, they all count. Um, and I just trying to remember. Oh, great goal from Caitlin Torby, of course. So that was it. One of And who got the fourth one? Why? Have, who got the other goal? I've already forgotten. This is embarrassing. Uh, Hannah? Check ahead of Hannah Wilkinson. Ah, yes, that was um, yeah. Uh, poor Mackenzie Barry. She's uh, she's really impressed me in Wellington's backline. But like, please don't don't let the ball bounce if, from a long ball kick if you can possibly avoid it. Uh, some interesting things I saw off the mini match. Um, Melbourne City tried to bring Naomi Thomas Chinema off the bench in the second half. One slight problem, she wasn't on the team sheet. So she just had to stay on the bench. Um, I don't know what's going on there, but good job for the yeah. referees to call it out as yes. well. Oh, though, the, the, the refs will always real. be 
the refs will always um, notice that. It's just that in the environment I used to in NPL New South Wales, they just change the team sheet later. So there's no consequences. But I mean, obviously, they're good to see that there's consequences here. They'll learn for next time. Also, uh, keep a substitute for Melbourne City late on. So Bob's got a bit of a rest and we got this and Koko Maistorovic made her A-League women debut. So that obviously keep a sub, not something you see every day. But that's, um, yeah, on my other, I did also like um, Isabel Gomez committing a foul in the first 10 seconds of the game. Wonderful stuff. <laughs> Way to keep Eric happy. All right, on to next week, round seven already, which is brings tears to my eyes. I don't know about the rest of you guys as well, but two matches scheduled for Saturday, Adelaide against Melbourne City. Could this be the season that Adelaide make the finals? They're currently in fourth position. They're playing some pretty good football. And also on Saturday, Sydney against Canberra. I expect to see a pretty good game from Canberra in this one. Stefan, your thoughts? I mean, you don't need to give a prediction, but Canberra have been playing pretty well. And and maybe against an opponent like Sydney, it could be the game that they bring out their best. Yeah, maybe we just need to, Canberra just needs to play more than a a half, a solid half. If we can um, play three quarters of a, a game the way we've been playing and put away some of those chances, then uh, yeah, I think uh, with you know if, if Sydney are missing a player or two, which uh, they are, then um, who knows? As Eric said. Mm-hmm. Uh, All right. Along to that, sorry. I just thought, I like I I like making a big call with absolutely no consequences for getting it wrong. So yes, I believe Adelaide will make the finals. I've just had a look at the table. I think they'll do it. Yeah, All right. I, I tend to agree. I think. Yeah, it's a crazy season. Everything can happen and Adelaide deserve to. So on Sunday, there are three matches currently scheduled. The Wanderers against Melbourne Victory, Wellington Phoenix against Brisbane Raw, and then Newcastle against Perth. So we'll see how th- how those matches go. Um, a oh, sorry, weekend. I just had a thought. Three matches within reasonable driving distance for me. It's just like NPL season. This, this is amazing. A game in Parramatta, uh, a game in Wollongong, and a game in Newcastle. What Love are it. the timings? Can you get to no, 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 uh, no, no. Four p.m. But... Four p.m. kickoff. Wanderers victory. Four p.m. kickoff in Para Wellington Brisbane. Four p.m. kickoff in Wollongong and Newcastle Perth. Six twenty kickoff in Newcastle. So okay, no. but so, uh, which I can one choose one. Your choice. Parramatta. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to Parramatta for Wanderers uh, victory. Which one and has the best food? Which one has the best food, mate? Um, well, it's got to be that's. Based on what's around the ground, that has to be the game, the game in Parramatta, but also um, a chance to, uh, you know, work on my Polydor and Nuffery. So I would like to, <laughs> All right. looking forward to and seeing that, her play. Another question. I had the question about whether or not Adelaide would make the finals. Interestingly, I, I think at least, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but the the squad for the Matildas has picked out a couple of players from the the dub at the moment and I thought that there was a significant push to get players to go overseas and play is this a good sign for the dub or will we soon see those players heading overseas as well Stefan your turn hot seat um so sorry are you asking are we going to see more players who we haven't seen go overseas. Yes, do, do, yes do that, that's. Or? I believe yes. that's the question. Will yep. players in this group, Matilda's group, going overseas then just stay overseas and not come back to Australia? This is where I'll steal shamelessly steal something from my friends at the Far Post Pod because there is not a lot of time between the end of the Asian Cup and the next international window, which is in February, I think. Which so Algarve, Algarve, maybe. which will will mean might not be worth the worth it for players to come back here quarantine go then potentially leave Australia to quarantine again for whatever it is they're going to do in the next international window mm. so but if you're if you're not if you're not in the frame yet you just need to look at what happened in um in Sweden when every single Aussie who went there last season ended up in the Matilda squad so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, can, I can imagine players who are not not quite there but almost mm-hmm. Wanting to um, to maybe get their name up and lights by uh, choosing making a smart choice of a of a team in Europe and maybe mm-hmm. um, playing some time. You, hopefully, you you pick a team where you're not going to be sitting on the bench much. Yep. Uh, if you if you can get your get your ninety minutes in regularly and put in some good shows, then um, I think Tony has has shown that he's very prepared to look at you yeah. and um, yeah. you know consider you. So okay. So maybe that's maybe that'll come into play for some of those French players. And, and if you're, I like and it. If you're not and sure, it, yeah. 
And then what happens to the dub? What, because um, if that you're is, Rennie what happens Seamson, to the dub? If you're Courtney Vine, if you're, I mean, Mackenzie Hawksby's not there, but Taylor Ray could be back in, in the fold as well. What happens to the dub if these players uh, are then to Sydney? I, and I don't think Sydney would fall down because it's about some squad depth as well. But I think this has a significant it has a potential to significantly impact the dub. Well, how good was the dub last year when okay. everyone thought it was a development league? It was That's so very good true. last season. And, so, uh, I mean, if it's yeah. good I, enough and I don't mean the quality of the dub. Season, I, um, I mean probably more the results of the dub. Uh, if, oh, put, put some chaos in there. Who cares? <laughs> Wait, please. What do you think... That'll have to be the um, title for the next pod, put some chaos in there. Okay. Um... Also, right. yeah. well, to add to Stefan's point, if you're not sure, if you're an Australian woman footballer looking to move overseas, you're not sure where to go, just go to Fortuna Hearing. Simple. That's right. <laughs> like, um, also, uh, by the way, that reminds me, they've got a, I think they might have a space for an Aussie because Alex Hewan spotted training with the Wanderers. So oh, I think okay. that's, I feel like that's something that might be announced soon, but they didn't, they didn't hide her from a training video they posted on the weekend or last week. So. Can't get it past the eagle eye, Eric. Um, eagle eye, Samantha or, Lewis, sorry. Um, no. Oh, very good. There you go. Um, they're one and the same person, actually. Then They are. Most of their Sam will be there. For Sam's sake, they are most certainly not the same person. Uh, All right. Let's talk quickly about FAWSL results where we have three matches have been postponed. So Chelsea against Tottenham didn't happen. Aston Villa against Everton didn't happen. West Ham against, West Ham against M- Manchester United didn't happen all of those mm. matches postponed mm-hmm. but the two matches or three matches that did happen eric do you want to take us through those ones sure so first up um i stayed up to kind of watch uh brighton versus a uh, brighton and hove albion versus manchester city and it's was a it's another weird game involving manchester city I remember joking with stefan when they beat aston villa five nil I uh, think well, last month, this is the least impressive 5 0 win I've ever seen. Now, time for the least impressive 6 0 win I've ever seen. Manchester <laughs> City did not much of anything for the first half. Goalless, uh, goalless in the, uh, at the break. And then there's like this weird flurry started by an unfortunate Brighton own goal. Man City score four times in 10 minutes. Then Hayley Rasso scores the fifth. Was a good, that's good from an Aussie perspective. And then Vicky Lasada was a, the deflected goal for the sixth. It was just like, but they, they do the Man City do these things. They do not a lot of anything. Then they have a weird flurry in which they score all their goals and then they go back to doing not a lot of anything. It's, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, yeah, I, I don't like watching Man City play. Much prefer Melbourne City. So, uh, but from an Australian perspective, oh, full games for, yeah, I said Rasso, full games for Alana Kennedy and Haley Rasso and Alana Kennedy involved in a clean sheet, which is uh, good for whoever. Good for the people writing the Matildas Abroad reviews for the Matildas website. Um, oh, the other point is uh, Man City, sh- their, their one tactic should really be just give the ball to Lauren Hemp because she's brilliant out on the left wing, always causing danger. She's like kind of like the one City player that never like stagnates in attack. It's just always full of energy and always looking dangerous. So uh, I feel like that's something Gareth Taylor might want to think about. A uh, rough one for Brighton and Hope Albion, but they have a great season and a great coach in Hope Powell. So I'm yeah, waiting to hear how play. Arsenal lost. I'm waiting to, uh, didn't have time to watch it, but can I just say what, what a, what, what a day for Birmingham City and their seven Irish players. They finally <laughs> won their first game of the season. They're out of the bottom place and out of the relegation zone. Two first half goals from Libby Smith and Beatrice Sari. Um, and I'm not entirely sure how it would happen. How it happened, I'm almost certain that Louise Quinn was massive at the back for Birmingham City with heading away literally anything that came anywhere near her. But yeah, Arsenal are the league leaders. They're still leading by four points. And hmm, it's it's one of those ones, football, eh? But uh, it's, I'm glad for Birmingham because it's been a, a tough season and some off the field stuff as well that I think has gone on for a couple of seasons with the club, but uh, great. There's no longer any winless teams in the FAWSL. Uh, and thank, thank, th- thankfully, thankfully they've all won a game and 
I think it's just a reminder that there's nothing guaranteed in this competition. Then finally, uh, Reading beat Leicester 1-0 at home at the um, fantastically named Select Car Leasing Stadium. A goal from uh, Vic with a goal from Melbourne Victory legend Natasha Dowie. So that was the three games that were played in the WSL. Thanks very much for that, Eric. All right, we better get on to Queens of the Week so we can start wrapping up the podcast as well. I know that we haven't got any notes in there yet from you, Stefan, but I hope you do have a Queen of the Week ready to go. Yeah, uh, caught on the hop with this a bit, uh, a bit of a late call-up. Um, mm-hmm. So I think I'll probably should agree with Eric's choice in a moment. But Wait, have heart... you seen my latest choice? Because I, I don't think I've, <laughs> okay, yeah, well, I've changed it, but anyway. I'm, oh, wait. you've changed it. Okay, well, okay. Well, I'll wait and see what you say. But my, oh. my heart really <laughs> wants to say as a defender, uh, I really want to uh, call out, you know, give it to, to Carly and to Winnie for their uh, making, you know, to getting into the, into the squad for the, uh, for the Asian Cup. But um, let's see what you come up with, Eric, and I'll just yeah. let, you, let you know if uh, it should have been your choice or not. Uh, oh no, that was not. There's nothing, nowhere near my choice. But Carly Rusbeck and sorry, apologies. Uh, we might have to edit this out as I type the art, port article on the ghost because I'm too lazy to do it tomorrow. So coming back from injury, I'll put in back from Whittier, and that was. And the making of <laughs> talking about too lazy. I don't feel like editing this out at all. I think okay, it's, now no, it's live football talk. Indeed. Perfect. So I think. Uh, Best wishes. Okay. Unfortunately, we were planning to have our Neil Bennett and Magella card on the pod, but they yeah, just life gets in the way, unfortunately. But Madge also selected Winnie Heatley. So you two have the same mind there. Because um, in the Matilda squad, in the frame for going to a, a first major tournament. And in fact, I actually can't remember her making a young Matilda's or junior Matilda squad. So I might want to look into that. This might, might be her first ever tournament with Australia. Also, and as we covered earlier, scored her first goal for Melbourne City uh, on the weekends. Neil, select Neil, named Courtney Vine, one of these those other call-ups. And as I've said before, the goal, uh, Matilda squad call-up, the goal, the assist, and and the nutmeg on the defender whose identity I'm protecting. Great week. Uh, great week for Courtney Vine. This, oh, this, by the way, is the perfect time to announce that I have ordered a Sydney FC jersey with Vine 11 on the back and if you're a Wanderers fan and you don't like hearing that I don't care <laughs> now um Cheryl what was who's your queen of the week as I get ready I haven't to type. written anyone down but look I, I think I've kind of got two I've got a queen and a king so queen of the week for me is Emma Checker love to see a defender score love um Emma Checker and just the commitment that she's got she's you know, really keeping the side together in, in Melbourne City. I, I think they're doing pretty well when they didn't necessarily start that that well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the king of the week for me, Tony Gustafsson, for being so kind with his time when I was able to do an interview with him. So shout out again for that one. Jump on to, if you haven't already subscribed, we'll put a link into the this pod note as well. So it's just a 14-minute a quick little chat, and he's so gracious with the way that he answers questions and whatnot. And I think that's really, really nice to know that we've got someone at the helm of the Matildas who seems to care not just about the players in the game, but he genu- genuinely cares about the input that the fans have on the game as well. Um, and he thinks that there's a really good amount of interest around the Asian Cup. So which is, did I did I write down how many days away it is? It's got to be 11 days uh, away I don't know. from don't the know Asian the Cup. Game. Our first game is the 21st. 21st. I don't know if that's the first day of the tournament, but that's our first game. Yeah, so well, yeah, ours, really looking yours. forward to the yeah. Asian Cup. The first day is the 20th. So on the okay. first day, China against Chinese Taipei. Woo, and that's, love it. that's the only match on day one, one by the look of it. And then there's a, a few matches on day two, including Japan against Myanmar, yeah. um, Australia against Indonesia, Thailand against the Philippines, which is at 11 p.m. So we know that Eric will be staying up to watch that. South well, Korea against can, Viet. Bill. Who's broadcasting it? <laughs> if it's broadcast, yeah. <laughs> South Korea are against Vietnam on the 22nd. And then the match that I skipped over is actually the host nation, India, on Friday against Iran. So, yeah, getting Friday, excited wait. about the Asian Cup. Yeah, I was thinking Great surely tournament. the host is playing the first game. That's, That's not what it says. Oh, really? Um, okay. Do, do, 
more weird AFC things. Um, yes. Yeah, so, by the way, the, I just wanted to point: it's China versus Taiwan. Not, oh, sorry. Um, yes, you I are make, correct. Like, shit, it's Taiwan. I refuse to use that other name because I think that's silly. I'm um, reading Google. Google yes. tells me that. So that yeah. name, that other name is the official name, but I just don't want to use it because I. Yeah. 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 You can cool. read up why it. But um, now also, oh yes, um, in light of the upcoming game later this month between Australia and the Philippines, I'm, with my Queen of the Week, I need to remind you all what my favorite national team is. So we head to the FA Women's Championship where Republic of Ireland International Leanne so Cannon scored a six-minute <laughs> hat-trick in Liverpool's 6 nil win over Blackburn Rovers. Wonderful to also see fellow green, girl in green, Nifa, he on the score sheet. For Liverpool, so yes, Irish internationals scoring hat tricks. It's absolutely wonderful, um, and yeah. Do, do we I, just I don't get have to talk about our favourite um, teams, clubs, whatever, even if they're not related to the Matildas anymore? I like it. Yeah, because I football exists outside this country, so I. Hey, um, in big news, I think is that Stina Blackstenius has signed for Arsenal. I think, which has is she? massive news. That, yeah, that I, is giant news, I, and they I certainly need her. I'll yep. Have a look at it. Um, and if we we get to talk about the the clubs and or teams that we like outside of the Matildas, I'm going for Watford. So one day, one day probably. maybe they'll they'll join the the Super League, but probably not. Uh, Watford. I, oh, I mean, Leicester did it. So um, now uh, let me just see. Stefan, wanna... have you got a deep dark team that you follow well, in women's yeah, football? Lead, I was just saying Leeds. Leeds in the uh, are in the same boat as Watford, I think. So yeah, got a while to go. No, they're not. Oh, Watford are two tiers above Leeds. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Leeds have got even further. I'm backing a winner then. All right. Well, I think we better wrap Ooh. up the podcast. But thank you everyone for listening in to us, and thank you to the co-hosts in Eric and Stefan. Um, Madge, hope the car's all good. Dale, hope works not too bad. Neil, I think was in line to get a um a COVID booster. So yes. it's it's, it's the way of the world. It. But th- thank you as always to the Beyond Ninety crew who um put together all the words for you to read and, and let's all exciting as we're heading into not only more rounds of the dub but in particular to the asian cup i think it'll be really interesting so great congratulations to all the players who have been announced in the squad um and to the people who are there vying for those last two positions for the four people that are are waiting good luck to you all and and i hope that you do the best that you can and we'll talk more football next week thank you very much Okay, mate, if I can just get your, your overall reflections on, on the performance. Yeah, I mean, I think I want to watch it again and just, you know, re- review it all properly. But I think uh, on the onset, it was a more resilient performance than what we had in Adelaide. Um, and I think we, we looked really good with the ball. That was exactly what the key message was leading up to this game. And we looked really solid without the ball. So we didn't get the three points, but I think we... We won in a lot of other areas today, which is going to help the team going into the next game and for the rest of the season. We set a good, good level today. Particularly uh, heartening to see that all that defensive work that I know you did in the week you know, bore some bore some fruit. Yeah, a lot of players had to step up today um, and improve their individual performance to, to help the team. And every single one of those players did stand up, and you know that that's positive. But, uh, and you know. To look a little bit deeper as well. There were still a lot of chances there that we, we could have created. Uh, sorry, could have converted that we did well to create. So I think now that's the, the next thing on on the list for us. But yeah, as I said, it's, a, it's certainly a step where what our expectations are in the right direction. <laughs> and what did it? What did you feel was was missing just in terms of trying to get that break up front today, Al? Yeah, well, I mean, we had we had some really clear cut chances in that you know that first bit there and. I'm pretty sure if we put those away, the game would have opened up a lot more and it would be easier for us. Um, so I guess that's the that's the next thing. And how much of a role did the experienced players, the likes of Kim and Tash and so on, play in guiding the younger players through the game no, today, they, especially with it being... Were, yeah, they were, they were immense. They were so immense. Um, the, the communication throughout the whole day has been really strong from, from all the leaders. Um, and all those players that you mentioned, you know, including Lisa, they really um, made, made a big impact throughout the whole day and, and throughout the game. And I think that's a, that's a really positive sign. 
One of the questions I've got made is um, in terms of players who are getting shut down quite quickly. Uh, what sort of coaching work can you do with, with players in order to counter that? Um, yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's a combination of things. The, the ball was moving a bit slow today because the field was quite thick and the conditions were humid. And as a result of the ball moving slow, when the player did get on it, they didn't have as much time and space as they probably would have liked. So, um, yeah, I'd say that, that that's a... That's a point, but it's not something I'm overly concerned about from a, from a team point of view. I think it was more of a circumstance point of view. OK. Um, in terms of the result itself, mate, did you feel that a draw was, was about fair? Um, look, as I said, we created some pretty clear-cut chances, which we should have taken 100%. Um, you know, I think we did enough there to, to get a result, some type of result, which we did, but I think... I'm leaning more towards the idea that we we probably did enough to win it. And I know it's very early to say, um, but in terms of the Sydney game, any any bumps and bruises, or is everyone apart from apart from Tash? Obviously, has everyone pulled up okay? Um, I've got to check in. Uh, I think players playing three games in you know seven or eight days is is very difficult. So yeah. my early prediction um, is that we're going to have to. Yeah, look at resting a couple of people and, and rotating the squad. But this is what we're prepared for. We, we've got a we've got a deep squad, and I'm sure people are going to take an opportunity when they're given it. And just finally, mate, on Tash, how is she at the moment? Ah, uh, she's a warrior. That's how she is, mate. She she just you know takes the pain and goes through the pain barrier. But yeah, she's she's solid, and I think she's she's okay. That, that was a bit of a nail in the coffin um, when we had all the momentum. Um, yeah, it's gutting. I'm gutted. I'm disappointed for the players because I'm actually really proud of that. You know, um, the work they put in, how they executed, the football they played. I'm actually really proud of that. So it comes down to some really simple things um, that cost. Um, and, you know, what happens in each goal box? So for us and against us, and they're, they're the moments that count. Um, I thought we were a little bit unlucky hitting hitting the post and, and those sorts of things and it'd be, it'd be nice one of these days for one of them just to go in and then we can build from that. Um, we don't seem to have that luck at the moment but yeah, that was really good. I, I'm just gutted for the players that we're not getting reward for our, our efforts and our work. Wasn't there, another goal for she had a great impact um, she's been coming back from injury so and we've played two games in four days so it's just managing her her minutes and her legs if you like um, but she had an instant impact and continued to work through that half and it's nice to see her get on the scoreboard she did great you got a big game against Sydney coming up next week. How important is it to get the first three points of the year, especially one in a final? Yeah. It's obviously crucial. Yeah, it's crucial. It is. Um, maybe we're a little bit lucky with the national team call-ups. Um, so hoping to take advantage of that. And with the way we've been training and the ability of we're showing um, with the ball, um, I'm actually really looking forward to that picture. It would have been nice going into it with three points under our belt already. Um, but I still think it's a good opportunity to play them. The world being all good and we actually get to Sydney. And lastly for me, how great you been to have Carly around the setup, especially with Emma Young and so much potential. How great you been to have her? Yeah, it's been good to have Carly and um, you know, through injury she hasn't played a lot of football this year. And you could just see her improving each week and I think this was the best game that she's played since she's been here. So I'm just glad that we can help and support her as she goes off, um, you know, with her national team call up. Yeah, well, um, yes, but we need to be tight at the back and not give up, you know, not put us in a position to be always chasing. So it's a balance of both, I think. Yeah. Um, Ash, disappointing result overnight um, overall, but um, good performance from yourself. Yeah, it was good to make an impact off the bench. I was, um, you know, that's obviously always the goal when you're an impact player like that. But, um, yeah, disappointing for the team. I thought we, you know, gave them only probably three chances or so and they scored all of them. So it just shows um, how cutthroat we probably need to be in the final third as well.
And I guess for you guys it was, again, a nice full of chances, but able to pull, kind of able to pull them off. I guess that's promising. Yeah, it is. It is promising. Like, I think at the start of the season we weren't creating chances at all, and now we've progressed to creating chances, and now the ball just needs to go in the back of the net. At the same time, I think we need to be uh, stronger defensively so that we don't have to chase two or three goals again. Talk us through your goal. Got a bit high. I thought, uh, you know, luckily I'm the highest jumper in the team, so I could get there and get the head on it. <laughs> um, so obviously this is Carly's last game. How great to see Emma being so young, Yeah, Carly's great, great person to have around the team as well as a great player, and I think she just, um, you know, is, is a good example of how a wing back position should be played or a full back position. Has a bit of experience and she's a homegrown talent too, so it's been great. And um, yeah, wish her all the best as she goes away for the national team duties. Obviously, it's not panic day yet, but a couple of you know, a couple of disappointing results. Some big matches coming up. How important are those? Yeah, sort of every game has been clutch, sort of uh, including this one, I think. But um, yeah, we just have to keep pushing, keep improving. I think it. it you start losing yourself if you focus on results instead of the process. So if we want to get better, we have to keep focusing on the process, no matter who the opponent is. Good luck, Leah. Really strong attack against today. Um, is that the plan to go out and attack? Go out and really hard. It's not like the three sides. We were doing far more of the attacking today. Yeah, I mean, look at the attacking talent we got in our squad. I think we got to play to our strengths and um, try and, and be dangerous and put other teams on the back. Foot. Um, I think that means we also need to be careful about, you know, keeping our balance so that we don't give away opportunities like what we did today. But I mean, I love attacking, and, and I'll take any um, charge towards the, the goal that I can. <laughs>